So this is a vehicle I worked on a number of months ago. It's a Hyundai Terracan 2.9 diesel, 2004 to 2008 model. And it came into the workshop with the four high and four low lights staying on at the same time. Wasn't capable of shifting out of them correctly and the customer wanted me to have a look. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what I did that day to fix that problem for that customer and I haven't had any issues or return since I did this work. Okay, so knowing that dim lights were on and knowing that we're having an issue shifting between 4 high and 4 low, I decided with the access there was to it that I would go straight for the shift motor on the transfer case. I took down a undershield before you can um, see this part of the video, but that was very straightforward. And now what I'm doing is getting access to that shift motor. I'm just marking the torque, torque heads there. Um, it's 10 mil that hold in a bracket on the left hand side of the shift motor and then there is three more uh, 10 mil heads that you need to loosen and back away so you can actually remove the shift motor from its location. Um, this is something that depending on availability of parts, depending on time in the workshop, you may or may not do. But what I wanted to do in this case was get access to the electrical connector, get access to that motor and just have a visible look inside it. See if there was any water ingress in the um, electrical connector. See if there was any um, problems noticeable inside in the uh, casing of the shift motor. That's my sole purpose of this. And what you can see me do here is remove the electrical connector now. That is the shift motor in its entirety. Very simple to do that. It's just a push down and pull back. Once you have it removed there, I check the pins on the wiring side and then I check the uh, pins on the plug on the motor itself. Everything looks good, look completely clean on that side. So the next thing I do is try to remove the uh, casing and um, the outer casing so I can get into the inner workings of this motor. This is two, uh, sorry, three Torx head that's on this but one of them was extremely tight. So what I do in these cases, I try and rock them back and over. Of course, we're gonna try some lubrication. And the other tip that I usually works for me is um, impacting on the head of it when you have something solid. So I put it in the vise, have a solid base, and then I use my punch just to hit on it um, to try and shock it uh, in its position so I can try and back away, something I use on wheel nuts all the time uh, and usually works a treat, but this is a very small uh, screw head type. You can see me rock it back and over here. And the reason I'm showing this part of the video is not um, everything goes to plan all the time. Sometimes things break no matter how we try. And in this instance, the um, screw head was completely rusted and it ended up breaking away on me. Not the end of the world on this case because uh, this is an issue with the shift motor on these in regards to it is causing problems and I have two that came out so I know I'll be able to secure that case in place afterwards. I take those two Torx heads out. Now uh, bear in mind I have these marked because there is a bit of movement that you can see there. Uh, you get a better visibility as I lift it up here. And what we're looking for when we're disassembling a unit like this is to see if there's any gumming up of any material. Is there a visible sign of an issue where we could see blockage, restriction? Is that gear wheel free to move? And uh, the first noticeable thing I could see is what looks to be white grease hardened over time. So uh, a very solid like um, pasty material that was down in it. And also the gear wheel was restricted on first movement. Now I spent a bit more time than you can see on this video at this, but I've shortened it so you can get, so you can get a good understanding of it. Cleaning process is pretty straightforward. I just go through all of the teeth, uh, clean up all of the sludge and gum that was on it, and uh, make sure everything is nice and free. There's a little outer sleeve there. I remove that as well and I clean behind it. 
both parts uh, or sorry both sides of the gear wheel needs to be cleaned um, too so you have the front side uh, as I'm facing it there that needs to be cleaned but I also remove it um, from the outer part of the casing and clean on the back side of it too which I will show in a little bit very simple just using a rag and making sure everything shines up making sure I have no restriction there you can see the other side of that gear wheel I'm uh, making sure that that spins uh, freely in that as well did feel tight just like the gear wheel felt tight didn't have freedom of movement straight away now I'm cleaning that up and uh, I go over it quite a bit once I'm happy with it I will put it back together that's a better visual of what looks to be that old white grease which is now hardened not in a plastic type of feel but quite hard all the same uh, I put a little film of uh, grease all around it before putting it back together there is a like a locating pin that has to slide back into the position then I put the outer case on making sure it sits down nice and the seal presses all the way now this is where the marking previously comes in handy because I know it's dead center of the torx screws and I always recommend before disassembly taking a picture um, marking with a whiteout pen or a sharpie knowing where everything goes it's now all back together I just give you a visual here of the layout of everything um, when it's back now bear in mind this was uh, not necessarily a fix that was meant to last but I did want to see if it fixed the problem even temporarily now that the vehicle has left the workshop a few months I can tell you it has lasted with no issues by doing that cleaning here I'm showing the four high and four low and it has to go into neutral before you switch down into uh, four low so I'm just popping it into neutral here and it was at this point that the vehicle wasn't capable of going into the uh, 4L and the lights would just stay solid now you can see here that the lights don't just stay solid it goes over to the four low and I'm able to switch it back up to the high so we had a very happy customer we were able to fix the problem for her even if it does turn out to be not a long-term fix they know exactly what's needed and they're going to be able to get the part either secondhand or new and fix that problem next time i really hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching